Back on the show is David Mashad, who will be making his RFA debut April 15th against Chris Hugh. Dave, how's it going? Going pretty good. Uh, how about you, James? Hey, I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. Not everyone asks. So I'm uh, going to tell you here, I'm, I'm doing quite well. And uh, how did this deal with RFA come together? And I understand that you are still under contract with Titan. I guess they just uh, gave you permission to fight for them. Yeah, it's uh, so, you know, it's in South Dakota, the car, and that's where I'm from. It's in Sioux Falls. I trained there for a long time. It's close to where I went to college. Got a lot of friends and, and you know, a lot of close friends, people I wrestled with back around there so we asked titan to let me fight for this one this one show and they let me or they allowed me to do that and then after this you know hopefully be back and challenging for a title or something with titan yeah and you know i'm glad you brought that up because you know a lot of the stuff that, that people talk about when it comes to titan is you know the canceled card and all this and you know this is a, a good example of them you know going out of their way letting you fight in your hometown especially for a rival organization like rfa um you know how good is it to to know that you're with a promotion that is you know going to kind of be flexible with stuff like this yeah it's good you know um RFA puts on a good card, so I'm happy to be on this card, I'm, especially where it's at, at the Sanford Pentagon. You know, it's kind of, it's a newer arena. Um, they've put on a couple of shows here, and it's, it's really good for, you know, the level that RFA is at. It's some of the best shows you'll see. So after I get this win smashed out, then I plan on going back and running through Titan. Good stuff. And one last thing on Titan. Uh, I understand you were actually injured even before that card was canceled. Is that correct, or was that uh, that that's something uh, missing? Yeah, I actually uh, pulled out. I had a concussion. Oh, bummer. And then and then it got canceled. But so you know, it is what it is. You guess either way, I wasn't. I got to fight. So. Gotcha. Uh, big thing I wanted to know about this card. Uh, you're not on the television portion of the card, correct? For this RFA card. No, I'm the first fight or the first fight before or the last fight on the undercard, I guess you'd say. Now, I got to ask, are you a little surprised by that? I mean, you're a UFC veteran. This is your first fight outside the UFC uh, since your release. Um, is it surprising at all? Well, I guess that was one of the stipulations with Titan, though. Oh, they gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Didn't want me um, giving RFA too much pub, I guess. But... You know, it's all right. I'm not too worried about being on TV. I've been on TV, you know, and UFC. So I'm just going to go in and put on a good show and see what happens. Dana White Dana White will be there, so I guess that's really all that matters. He's not going to see me on TV, but he's going to be at the card, see me put on a good performance and get back in his good graces or something. Well, at the very least, you're getting some TV time here too. You know, YouTube's worldwide. So, you know, yeah. th 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 that's always nice too. But uh, in some ways, this is kind of good. You know, your first fight back, uh, you know, out outside the UFC kind of takes the pressure off a little bit, not having to be on, you know, TV and fight pass and all that. Uh, I don't know. I don't really think about it. I mean, it's cool to be on TV. It, it probably would be better. You know, uh, there's a lot of people like down here in Phoenix, people aren't really going to be able to make it all the people I trained with. So they would have liked it to be on TV. And I got a lot of family, you know, all over the country, people I know all over the world. I don't know if they would get access, but they probably are good on good enough on computers to get a stream somewhere. Right. So. Yeah, exactly. I uh, know. Let's, let's talk about your opponent here. Uh, Chris Hugh, he's uh, 16 and 11, but he's uh, lost two straight. How do you think you match up against him? Um, you know, from what I've heard, he's pretty good grappler, pretty good on the feet, kind of decent all around. Um, you know, coming off two losses, everyone loses every now and then. God, my dog's attacking me. No worries. But, uh, yeah, he, you know, he's taller than me, so he's going to have that reach. But fighting at 70, which I want to do more now, I think everyone's going to have that reach on me, at 5'9", especially. But, you know, I'm just going to – work my head movement, get inside, beat him up, see what happens. Yeah, and uh, how does it feel, you know, being at welterweight, not having to make that big cut down to 55? It must, you know, be a lot nicer not having to diet, and, you know, uh, all that stuff. It is so good. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I'm eating clean, so I'm just eating clean. No cheat days or nothing, but I get to eat. I get to eat enough to get full. I get to eat enough to have a full belly. I get to drink enough. I don't have to cut out milk or I just cut out milk two weeks before normally I don't drink milk for about a month and a half and I love milk and I just cut out sugar on 
you know, I wasn't doing a lot of sugar, but just with my orange juice. So I cut that out this week. Um, uh, I went from turkey thighs to turkey breast this week. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not, you know, not huge changes for my diet really. And I'm already within 15 and like my last fight I cut from 23 the week of. So this time I'm going to cut from about 12 or so and that'll be a breeze. But yeah, 55, it was tough. Like as soon as I hit 80 all the time, I just, I don't know, practices get hard. It gets hard to train. It gets hard to talk to my girlfriend. Right. <laughs> Just Turning everything, everything just goes da- goes downhill. So now fighting at seventy, it's it's amazing. Yeah, and everyone likes hanging around with you more, right? Because you're not as grumpy. Well, I don't know if anyone ever likes hanging around with me, <laughs> but they put up with it a little more. Yeah. Uh, now you do train at the MMA lab, and uh, you know one of the one of your teammates has got a big fight coming up as well, uh, Benson Henderson. You know how nice is it to have guys that are also competing relatively soon, and you know being able to kind of get ready at the same time. So yeah, we got one guy fighting this weekend. Um, Jake, he's fighting Lloyd Woodard. So oh, okay. He had started already. He's fighting him up in Montana. Then we got me next weekend, a couple of the amateurs. and Oh, no, I guess they just turned pro next weekend. And then the weekend after, we got a couple more guys. I think that's um, Ben and I think Effie's fighting that weekend too. Yes. You know, yes, we've yeah. all kind of been around just – grinding really uh you know i mean i i hate when people say that they're grinding but you know we've just been <laughs> well we've you just, just you just played into the stereotype dave so i you know we're no, just, kinda... <laughs> just this is my dog's new toy my oh buddy awesome Scott bought it for him. yeah but um yeah i mean it's been good everyone's in camp all together but that's how it always is there's always so many guys in camp and it's it's always got guys to train with guys to spar with and it's always good. It's always a good time. I mean, not a good time because they're beating me up, but it's always good. I, I got to give you bonus points in this interview. You're playing with your dog and you're talking at the same time. Multifaceted, David Machado. I got to give <laughs> oh, you credit yeah. for this one. That's, I'm uh, a man that's of good. many talents. Many talents. Uh, now he doesn't want to come over here. I was going to put him on camera. I know. We put him on the spot here. Um, you know, you mentioned some of your teammates there, you know, Escadero and, and Henderson and stuff. Are those sort of the main people you've been training with uh, for this camp? So I got a lot of rounds with Ben. Um, you know, I got Scott Holtzman. I got rounds with quite a bit. Brian Barberina, you know, Bam Bam. Mm-hmm. Nice shirt. The, I sa- like that. the Sage Slayer. Yes. But, um, yeah. No, I mean, there's so many guys in the gym that I'm just getting rounds with. You know, today I got, got a round with um, Eddie, who's a pro. You know, no one knows about him. doesn't have the best record, but he's just a beast on stand-up. I mean, there's so many guys – we got another guy in here, Zach, um, who just rolled in. He's got a fight pretty soon, like the week after me, who's a pretty decent 70-pounder. You know, he's a good 70-pounder on the kind of local circuit up in the Midwest. I mean, there's so many guys, like, even if even if I don't have, you know, one or two rounds with Ben a day or anything, there's still – it's going to be three rounds of, of hell, really. No matter who it is, no matter who it is in there. Good stuff. All right. Well, I got to get a prediction for this fight. How do you see this one ending on April fifteenth? Uh, first round TKO. Nice. I like it. I think that's what I say for most of my fights, though. It's good. That's the soundbite I needed. That that's perfect. I like that. And uh, you know, um, are you going to be keeping an eye, obviously, on the uh, vacant welterweight uh, title fight that's happening with Titan on the? uh, I believe it's April thirtieth. Bilal Muhammad, Steve Carl. Is that sort of what you're eyeing after this? Is getting the winner of that maybe? Yeah, what I'm thinking is I'm going to go out, I'm going to finish this guy, get word that one of those two dropped off and jump in there. Nice. I like it. I like it. Yeah, always always got to be on standby for that. But, um, you know, the best laid plans of my some men. Yeah, of course. Uh, now, you haven't fought in almost a year, uh, you know, because I, I think it was 186 was your last fight. Um, when, when April last... 25th, yeah. Yeah, so it's coming up. Uh, how many times do you want to fight this year? Are you trying to make up for lost time? Yeah, really. Um, I mean, hopefully – once a month, once every month and a half, just jump in it. Well, shit. I mean, like, you know, I'm not making that much now. Like, in the UFC, I could afford to fight two times a year, but now I got to fight, fight, fight. So hopefully, you just get a couple, you know, maybe get three or four wins and get called back up. But I want to fight three times this summer for sure. 
Awesome. Well, we look forward to it. You're returning to the cage April 15th, RFA 37. Uh, Dave, I want to thank you so much for joining me here on the program. Just remind my audience where they can find you on social media and give any thank yous or shout outs, including uh, your dog's name. The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, hit me up. You know, Bulldog Mashad on my Facebook page, uh, Bulldog UFC, I think, on my Twitter and Instagram. Maybe, maybe not. But you can also follow my dog, Pete's Chew Gimli, on Instagram and <laughs> nice. Twitter. At Pizza Chew, Pizza, C-H-U, like Pikachu, Pizza Chew Gimli, like Gimli on Lord of the Rings, Gimli, Son of Gloin. Um, yeah, so hit us up and let us know what you think.